Hey, hey, welcome to the Zapper Quick Start Guide. Uh, so the idea of this video is that we're going to try to show you a couple things about getting zaps into your Cluekeeper apps. So these zaps are these little augmented reality experiences. Uh, probably best if I just show you one. Uh, let me bring up my iPad here. Um, and the idea of a zap is that it shows you a button uh, which says scan on it by default. Um, and it launches you into an augmented reality experience. I mean, an augmented reality experience is one where it shows you the real world uh, with the camera feed, but then it also shows uh, augmented reality content. So obviously there's no uh, zapper rocks really on this dollar bill. Uh, but this is uh, an idea of something that you can add to your Cluekeeper app, um, and you can come up with a lot of fun puzzles. Um, so obviously this one isn't that amazing, um, but you can get the idea to where if you can add things to your puzzle that are augmented reality experiences, you can come up with a lot of new clues uh, that can really excite your players. So it's really pretty cool that you can use this uh, zap tool uh, and bring these into your hunt. And there's a lot of really neat ideas. I can't wait to see some things you do. Uh, the goal of this video, though, is to uh, just get you up and running so you kind of understand what it is. And we're going to make that experience that you just saw, that zapper rocks on a $1 bill. Uh, first, a little vocabulary. Uh, so there's Cluekeeper, uh, and we're a company, and then there's Zapper, and they're a company. Um, and we make these two products, and they complement each other really well. Uh, so Zapper does the augmented reality thing. Just to help you out with the words, uh, there is a thing called a Zap. That is the actual augmented reality experience. So you, you build a Zap, and then you integrate it into Cluekeeper, and that's the experience that your players get. Uh, there's Zapper, that's their company name. And then there's ZapWorks, and so we're going to be talking about ZapWorks right a bit. ZapWorks uh, are, is the tool that you use to build the Zap. So you don't build it inside the Cluekeeper interface, you build it over at ZapWorks. Uh, ZapWorks has two different tools you can use. We're going to use their designer tool today, um, and we'll tell you some more about their studio tool. Uh, but those are kind of the, the nouns that you need to know when you get into this. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted you to have a little background about things that you see over at the ZapWorks site. Uh, so the way their tool typically works uh, is you, you get your zaps ready. So you use ZapWorks to get your zap ready, and you'll do that with Cluekeeper as well. You have to prepare your zaps over there. The next thing that they'll have you do, so like they'll say, is that you have to add your zap code um, onto your tracking image. That is, that is false for us. Um, so there's this thing that is a zap code. Zap code is how you download your zap. You don't need that when you use Cluekeeper because we actually, when you create the hunt, we wire that up. So just kind of be aware when it says things about zap codes that you don't need to know about zap codes. Uh, and then the last thing is that you zap it. Uh, and so that was kind of the example that we showed here. So you hit your tracking image uh, and then your augmented reality experience starts. With Cluekeeper, you're going to be using the Cluekeeper app. Uh, obviously, with their information, they'll talk about how you could use the Zapper app. But for us, we're going to do everything within Cluekeeper. So that's kind of a little bit of background on these things. Let's go ahead and get started uh, in building our first experience. Uh, so to hop over to the ZapWorks site, uh, there's a link here, cluekeeper.com slash zapper, uh, and you can click on that. Uh, now, interesting enough, that just takes you over to a site, zap.works. So I guess you could go there directly. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, once you're over at ZapWorks, uh, you have to sign in over there. Um, I recommend that you use your, your Google sign-in. If you've been here before, you can log in, uh, but if it's your first time, you'll have to click on register. Uh, so when I click on register, the first thing it asks me um, is, you know, do I want to make a business account, an educational account, um, including Zapper in your app, or personal? What you want to do is you want to click on personal. The reason for this is that it, even if you're a company, you can still use personal. Um, and the reason is uh, the business account is, is so much for a month. It's for businesses, people that are making money, um, except for we have, we're a partner with Zapper, right? And if you use Zapper, uh, Zaps and Cluekeeper, uh, they get they get paid in a different way, right? And so you can just use personal Zaps. They're, they're very cheap. You get one for free. Uh, and that's what we recommend you do. And so you have to click on this create personal account. Uh, and then this will get you started. You can either, you know, register with Facebook, Google, or use email password. Uh, adjust my screen a little there so you can see things better. Uh, so it says zap codes used is zero, remaining zap code is one because I signed in as a new person, right? And I'm using my personal zap codes. So what I want to do is I want to make a new zap. Uh, so it says make a new zap code, that's fine. 
Um, again, there's this question of zap code. We, we don't actually care about the zap code, uh, but we have to get past this step because that's how their tool normally works. Uh, and so I'm gonna call this zap uh, talking George. Uh, make sure I spell it right there. Um, and you can see how we're gonna make this zap in uh, their Zapworks tool, and then later we'll bring it over to ClueKeeper. Uh, the next question you're hit with is, what do I want? Do I want a widgets tool, the designer tool, the studio tool? The one that I want is the designer tool. Uh, just to kind of talk about it just a little bit though, is the widgets tool is something that you probably don't need at all. Um, it's just like a, a little built-in thing with no trigger image capability. You probably don't care about that. The next tool is the designer tool. Uh, the designer tool is what we're gonna use in this video. That is a web tool, right? So you just use Chrome and you just, uh, you do it right inside their web interface. It's really the perfect tool for beginners. That's what this video is gonna be about. And then the other tool is Studio, so Zapworks Studio. And Zapworks Studio is a program that you, you download and then you use the Studio to make things. Um, and it's a little bit more complex, um, but there's some powerful things you can do. It's a fully scriptable environment. It's really cool but it's too much for this video. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go with designer. So I'm gonna hop back over here and say designer. Uh, and now that I've selected that, it's actually created this new zap for me and it's given me a unique zap code for it, uh, but there's no content inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this uh, to edit it. Um, and so here I can do things like changing the name, uh, I can publish it and things like that. But I actually wanna go one step further and I wanna go into editing the content. Um, and so whenever you edit the content, there's some videos to help you get started. Um, but what we want to do is we want to select uh, download your zap code. Now, this is, this is where we get started, and you can just kind of bear with me here, and it'll make sense once we kind of get through it. Um, but you might think, hey, I don't, I, don't, um, you know, I don't want a zap code, so I must want to click on this other thing. So uh, start without a tracking image. Uh, that, that is not what we want. We want a tracking image. Tracking image is like our $1 bill, so something it lands on. So we're going to say download our zap code. And then it's actually kind of funny. Um, the next page is where you download your zap code, uh, but we don't need it because we're using ClueKeeper. So we actually just continue past this step, uh, which is kind of neat. The next step that we do need to do is we do need to upload a tracking image. Uh, so we're going to need to find a tracking image uh, to use. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate on my computer until I find a a $1 bill image, and this is something I've prepared in advance. I've just found a $1 bill image. Um, I'll make it available to where you can uh, download it from the link above this video if you want. Um, it'll say how good is this tracking image, like how much contrast is there, um, and apparently a $1 bill is really good. Who knew? The whole thing is green. It does warn us that there's no zap code found, um, and that was intentional, right? So normally they would have zap code, I've said this many times, we don't need it in ClueKeeper. So we're gonna say use this tracking image, um, and so that brings me into their Zapworks designer interface. And so this is my tracking image. So as soon as um, this tracking image is seen, uh, it'll show my content on top of it. You can put a lot of content on top of it. Uh, so images, videos, sound, text, uh, all kinds of fun things. Um, I'm gonna start with an image and I'm gonna upload an image uh, and I'm gonna upload a little speech bubble is what I'm gonna do. And then this speech bubble is gonna pop up on here. Um, and then I can adjust it to wherever uh, I see fit. I'll put it right about here. Uh, that looks fine. Uh, you can make it, uh, you know, bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then I'm going to next add some text. So I'm just going to click on text here. Uh, and I'm going to make my text say, uh, Zapper rocks, uh, exclamation point. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what George would have said. Um, and so I'm going to put it in here. And again, you can, you can adjust things. You know, you can make it bigger, smaller, uh, as you see fit. Um, and that's the, that's the entirety of the zap we're gonna make, right? So a pretty simple zap. Um, another thing that you can do is you can decide whether you want uh, grab and go enabled or not. So what is grab and go? Uh, grab and go means if I lose the tracking image, do you want your overlay to stay on the screen or do you want it to hide? For this experience, I want it to hide. So I'm gonna disable uh, grab and go. So I uncheck that box. And then the next thing I want to do is I just kind of want to preview it. The fastest way to preview uh, is to fire up your, uh, your Zapper app. Um, so I downloaded both the ClueKeeper and the Zapper app onto my device. And the Zapper app is really handy for, for previewing things. Uh, see if I can kind of get both on the screen here. Uh, and so then you need to hit your Zap code uh, and then that downloads it. And then now as soon as you find a $1 bill, uh, it says Zapper rocks. Uh, and of course, if you cover it up, um, and then it comes back, uh, it'll say Zapper rocks again. 
Uh, so my preview looks pretty good. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm ready to ship it over to Cluekeeper. So I'm going to say publish from here. So I've got Talking George, uh, and Talking George has now been published. Now I'm going to go over to Cluekeeper. Um, and the one I'm going to do in Cluekeeper is I'm going to go into a clue. Uh, I kind of assume that you already know a little bit about Cluekeeper. Uh, and I'm going to disable Zapper just so I can put it back on. So now I've got, uh, got a clue here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to enable uh, Zapper uh, for clue content. And then what I want to do is I've, I've enabled it, uh, but I haven't added the zap code yet. It's definitely important that you add the zap code. So I'm going to click on um, add zap code. And you can see that I've got exactly one. Uh, I've got Talking George, which was made with the Zapworks Studio, or sorry, the Zapworks Designer tool. Um, and so now I've got that in my, my hunt. So then I hit save. Um, and then, you know, you have to use a test registration. Um, if you need to learn how to do like test registrations and things like that, there's some other tutorial videos that you should watch about that. Uh, but it should be ready to go at this point. So if I bring back up my iPad uh, and I go into the Clue Keeper app this time, so I launch into Clue Keeper. Um, and so now it says uh, scan on here at the bottom. Um, by the way, you can totally change that, by the way. It doesn't have to say scan. Uh, and so, for example, you can change the, the text here. So maybe I want it to say aim at George, uh, and then I just hit save. Um, and the neat thing is, is that you can see where it says scan, and then there it says aim at George. Um, and so if you uh, click on the button, uh, and then you aim at George, uh, you can see it says Zapper rocks. Uh, it also tracks the image, uh, which is kind of cool. So as I move it around, it, it stays right with it. Uh, and if it goes away, uh, the word Zapper rocks goes away too, right? Um, so that is the augmented reality experience that we were trying to make. Uh, you can see that it's pretty easy to bring things into Cluekeeper, which I think is a lot of fun. Uh, there's also a couple other things I wanted to say about uh, Zapwork Studio. Uh, so Zapwork Studio is uh, for the people that have kind of graduated from Zapworks Designer. Um, and it's a fully scriptable uh, 3D interface, so you can write code in JavaScript. Uh, you can bring in three-dimensional elements. It has a few features, like let's say you wanted something to show up on the screen before the tracking image, uh, you'd have to use Studio to do something like that. Um, if you just wanted a, a more multimedia experience, like say you just wanted to play a video when they click the button, uh, you could do that. I've got one clue where I just want to show like a Braille like reference sheet uh, when they click the button, I can do that. Um, and there's actually much deeper integration with the Clue Keeper app with Zapwork Studio. Uh, so, for example, you can solve clues from within the Zap. So you could actually hide the solve button and you could just like make them play a game and, and then solve it. Uh, so that's our overview of uh, Clue Keeper and Zapper. Uh, you can see it's pretty easy to get started. It's free to get started. As soon as you need more Zaps, you will have to, to buy a couple more Zaps. Uh, so the way you buy Zaps is you buy personal Zaps. I think they're a ballpark a dollar fifty each or something like that, but they're pretty inexpensive. And the reason that it's so inexpensive is because Clue Keeper um, is actually paying Zapper on the other end, uh, which is why you can use a personal account instead of a business account. Uh, we hope that you try it out uh, because, man, there are some cool ideas that you can make if you figure out how to use this tool. All right, see you next time.